Hi, this is Mario Andretti, and this is Speed City. Welcome back to the fastest hour in radio, Speed City. All right, well, we had uh, we got Chris Midland out at Silverstone, and he is jumping around grabbing some interviews, and he just caught up with James Vowles from the team principal at Williams after a good finish by both the drivers. Oh, of course, but I don't have a camera, James, you no, see, but, sadly. But I do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're being Netflix. That's what's going on. Um, James, what a result. I mean, and what performance. That's the other thing. I mean, the car looked strong all weekend, but you were there fighting Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin and looking quicker than him on the exact same strategy at the end of that race. Oh, you, you summed it up well. I think qualifying we knew on a single lap we knew we could deliver and then it was just a question of how we can translate it onto race pace we knew we'd be there or thereabouts fighting for a point i've been pretty clear on that all weekend but this was better than that this was on merit fighting an aston and two ferraris and and it felt good at the end of the race is the best i can say i mean it looked good for the outside as well i think the fans were loving it with alex up there but also logan coming through one place outside the points i mean how encouraged you've been by i guess the overall strength of the team this weekend yeah uh, logan this is what you have to support rookies in this journey. It is incredibly tough. I've been very clear on that. Five races at the beginning of the year, the street tracks, tracks he's never been to before. He hadn't done a kilometer in this car before we got to Bahrain. And so what we have now is an environment where he's able to build and learn and grow. And that's what happened in Austria. It's the first time you saw him step change towards it. He's now gone to a track where, again, he was strong last year. And you can see that step again in confidence. And the first into the race, you look back and there's Logan just there. And he finished the race just a couple of seconds away from his first point. We were egging him on, but there was not a lot I could do to get through. I mean, the pedal moved him forward, but that didn't help you on track. But the point is that learning, that confidence, that's the bit that he needs. And you'll see that will be a step change now going forward. Yeah, it's very encouraging from a driver point of view. But I remember you saying in Canada how hard you targeted that race, that points could be on offer there, new power unit in there, get the upgrade on the car. Did you expect it to be so productive at so many venues afterwards as well to this level? I think Silverstone, when you look back at the history and look at this car, the, the team has generally been strong here. So I expected it to be good. Perhaps not the level we are here, where you're finishing eighth. You know, what I mean by good is we have the opportunity to score a tenth or a ninth if we get absolutely everything right. Today, there are some circumstances that did also fall towards us. We have to be clear about that. But I expected that the performance we on the car, well, people asked me, what is it? I said, it's downforce. It will help you everywhere in that sequence. Now, there are going to be tracks that don't suit us as much. Budapest coming up is one of those. But Spa on the other side of that will. And so what we've got to do is just make sure the tracks where we know we have the opportunity maximize that. Well, you've certainly done that today. And I remember again asking in Canada if you could fight for seventh legitimately in the Constructors' Championship, and you've moved up to seventh today. I mean, how much of a boost is that for, for this team? Because I'll be honest, I think everyone if they're to rank the teams going into the season thought Williams would finish 10th. <laughs> Sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, so have a look around. Have a look at people's faces, their shoulders. I always talk about body language because that's one of your key drivers. doesn't matter what words you use. Look at how they are and how they're standing. Everyone here is proud now, proud to wear the Williams shirt. I described it to Channel 4 as there seems to be a lot of closet Williams fans, and that's how I describe it now. I'd say the whole pit lane in the world is. And the progress we've made is genuine and real, but there's a lot more to come. And a lot more to come also means that we have to disrupt what we're doing at the moment. But I don't want to be here for the team just fighting in eighth or ninth. I want the team to have the ability to, to be rewarded with the, the benefits I've had in my lifetime in the sport and fighting further up than that. And to do that, there's a long, long way ahead of us. But does this show you've got, I guess, the people? You've, you've got the potential for this team? As you say, you said there's areas that need improving and investing in and it will take time. But for you to already be fighting with teams like the size of Aston Martin, with the money behind them and the new infrastructure they've got, I mean, that must be so encouraging for the future. It, it is. But again, boots on the ground, as I always use the expression, one race. You know, I'll, I'll really come to you and say that once we've done that for five races in a row and they're looking at behind us. And I, I think that's a little bit unrealistic from where we are now. But that's what I want for the team. We have good people in place. There's no doubt about it. You don't produce the car you have here. We've made changes already. There's many, many more to come across the next few years. And that's the bit I'm excited by. This is where we are today, where we're going to be in the future. And just finally, how good is Alex Albon? Because he's just been producing from the outside, it looks like stunning performances week in, week out. I mean, if he hears this, average, it's OK. Uh, we need to work on a few things. If he doesn't hear this, I've already said it, he, he's He's so underrated, and I think finally now people get the opportunity to see how incredible he is. I won't tell him, don't worry. Done. Thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, that was great. If he hears this, I love it. All right, guys, we got to sneak in a break wow. real quick. And when we come back, Chris Medlin caught up with Christian Horner, and he's 
going down to McLaren after that. You listen to Speed City, back after these messages.